Welcome to our weekly scripture reading. Today, we return to our reading of the Gospel of Matthew. I pray we learn much from the reading of this Gospel account. So pull out your Bible. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 12. Let's read a chapter of God's Word together. Matthew 12. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, and his disciples were hungry, began to pluck heads of grain and to eat. When the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. But he said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry, he and those who were with him? How they entered the house of God and ate the showbread which was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priests? Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the pro temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Yet I say to you that in this place there is one greater than the temple, if you, had, if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless. The Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Now when he had departed from there, he went into their synagogue. Behold, there was a man who had a withered hand. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal, the Sabbath, heal on the Sabbath? That they might accuse him. They said to him, What man is there among you who has one sheep? And if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not lay hold of it and pull lift it out. How much more of more value than is a man is a man than a sheep? Therefore it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. They said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and it was restored as whole as the other. And the Pharisees went out and plotted against him how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from there, and great multitudes followed him. And he healed them all. Yet he warned them not to make him known, that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom I, my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will declare justice to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel nor cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break. Smoking flax he will not quench, till he sends forth justice to victory, and in his name Gentiles will trust. Then one was brought to him who was demon-possessed, blind and mute, and he healed them. So the blind and mute man both spoke and saw. All the multitudes were amazed and said, Could this be the son of David? Now when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, Surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods? Let's see, first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Therefore I say to you, every sin and blasphemy which will be, forget, will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against a spirit will not be forgiven men. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Fruit of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Now when some of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. 
For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up again in judgment with this generation and condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And indeed, a greater than Jonah is here. The Queen of the South will rise up in judgment with this generation and condemn it, for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and, to ind and indeed, a greater than Solomon is here. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through the dry places seeking rest, finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. When he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put to or in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. They enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it be with those in this wicked generation. While he was still talking to the multitudes, behold, his mother and brother stood outside, seeking to speak with him. Then one said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are out standing outside, seeking to speak with you. But he answered and said to the one who told him, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? And he stretched out his hand toward the, the disciples and said, Here are my br mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother, my sister, and mother. Let's pray. I want to thank you for the great days you've given to us and all you've done for us. We want to thank you for this section of Matthew, Matthew 12, that we could read about it and read about different things within it that we could learn. We thank you and praise you for what you teach us today. Bless in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray the Lord has blessed you today from this chapter. If you have a question, a prayer request, or like to see these readings and daily devotions directly, please feel free to email me at shinethelightforhim at mail.com. Now tomorrow we're going to begin an intensive one-week study on the gospel from the Master himself, as he instructs Nicodemus on what the gospel actually is. Thank you, and may God bless you. Hope, you, hope to see you tomorrow.